Hey Yarny friends, Rachel here. Today we are doing a tutorial for you guys on this beautiful gingham blanket that I just completed today. I am so in love with it. It turned out absolutely wonderful. I will be doing step-by-step -step instructions so you guys know how to make this beginning to end. And I did wind up finishing it off with this really pretty fringe border on two sides. And so without further ado, let's get into it. I have, we'll have at the end of the video, uh, my full pattern chart. So you can see everything that you need to, but there are also step-by-step -step instructions. I will include chapters so you know exactly when those steps are broken up in the stream of the video. So you can jump to different sections if you need to, but I can't wait to make this tutorial for you guys. So you can make this big squishy, cozy, wonderful blanket for yourselves. All right, let's get into it, guys. All right, everybody. So before we get started here, I'm gonna run over the basic pattern um, and the yarns that I'm using. I have um, my pattern all plotted out for me here with how many um, rows across I'm doing and what size they're going to be. The skinny ones are gonna be done on my 22 needle. The big ones are gonna be done in my 46 needle. Um, I have my row count so I don't have to reset my counter all the time down the side here so I can keep track of exactly what my rows are. And if I didn't want to, just keeping track on this side of exactly how many rows are in each stripe as we go down. So the way that this pattern works is we're gonna be running the stripes long ways. So we're gonna do all of this stripe, and then this one here, and then this one here, and this one, 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 joining all of these together. So that is how the blanket works. Um, <clears throat> you just gotta do it one panel at a time, and you're gonna be alternating your panels between the 22 and the 46, and the 22 and the 46. So that's how it's gonna work. Um, the colors of yarn that I'm using, for my blanket. Uh, the darkest color is Yarn B Soft and Sleek in Burgundy. And then the medium tone color is Yarn B Soft and Sleek in Mauve. And my final color is Yarn B Soft and Sleek in Blush. So that's going to be my light color. Um, <clears throat> So this is what I keep next to me while I am working up on my machine. So I have my row counts and so we can go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to start on the 22 needle machine. So I'm going to start with my dark color and my mid-tone color. As you can see here from the 22, the skinny rows, I need my dark tone and my mid-tone. I will give you a, a close shot of this at the end of the video so that you can have this and screenshot it if you want to, but I'm just gonna keep it here for reference for right now. So with my 22, I'm gonna do dark, then mid, then dark, then mid, then dark, then mid. And the rows are for these is gonna be 12 rows, 33, 12 rows, 33, 12 rows, 33. So that's how it's going to work. So I'm going to keep this here so I can reference it <clears throat> while we're working along. And to get started, you are going to want to have some waste yarn. So I do have some waste yarn here. I'm going to cast on to my machine using my waste yarn. And you can just knit... Um, I usually do seven rows, but anywhere between five to ten rows should be plenty for casting on. Let me grab my yarn tensioner here. Hold on one second. The yarn tensioner that I have here is a little bit broken. The end snapped off of it. <laughs> if you can see that there. But I still have the um, thing that I need here. My chair swung around. I have a rotating chair and it swung around and it busted the end off of this. But I'm just using the smallest tension, so we're still going to go with it today. Um, <clears throat> why am I zeroing this out? I don't need to. I just need to. I thought I was already on my regular rows, not my waist yarn here. So cast on your waist yarn. Just a few rows to get things started. And that should be plenty. And I need a scissors. Hold up. All right, so I'm gonna cut my waist yarn. 
my busted little yarn snips here. Um, working with all the broken things today. You know, you still make it work if it still functions. I'm going to um, switch from my waist yarn to my dark color, which is my burgundy. This is going to be the exact same for every um, strip you <clears throat> do on your 22 needle machine. It's always going to be the same two colors. It's always going to be the dark and the mid. So leave a little tail in there. Clear out your counter. This is where it is absolutely essential that your counter is on zero because you're going to be wanting to follow those row counts very closely. Like I said, we are going to be doing, if you can see here, um, 12 rows, 33, 12 rows, 33, 12 rows, 33. And then there's a total of 13 stripes. And these are the row counts so that I don't have to reset my counter. So go ahead and start knitting until you get to 12 rows. And I will meet you there. All right, so my counter says 11 rows. You can see it there, I think. Um, <clears throat> And some of you have noticed that I don't start before the black pin. I start after the black pin. That is just simply a personal preference. I like to have my row count switch at the end of the row rather than at the beginning. You don't have to do that. <laughs> um, that's just how I do it. But I do find that it is a little bit helpful when I am doing blankets and doing lots of color changes because I see those black needles turn over and I stop here and I think, okay, I can't do it right here. I don't want to do my color change directly on there. I want it to be bumped to the back of my work. And so I'm actually going to knit two more needles past those black needles. And that's where I'm going to do my color change. Now that's not where I did my color change here when I was going from waist yarn to main yarn. I did it right where I started here on the black needle between the black needle and the white needle because that's where our actual piece is going to end. But when we're doing our, <clears throat> excuse me, our color changes, I want it to be slightly offset so that can go to the back of the piece. So I'm doing it two pins past the black, last black pin here. That's how I do it. Um, you can do it however you choose. Just remember to give yourself a couple of stitches past where you started while you're doing your color changes in the middle of the blanket. The start and the finish of your blanket, you will do on the same pin that you normally work from. So I'm going to drop that in the middle there, and then I'm going to grab my mid color, which is blush. And I'm going to drop that on the floor next to me. I cake up my yarn, I drop it on the floor next to me, I pull from the outside of the yarn, and it works beautifully. I never have any tension on my yarn unnecessarily, and it works like a dream every time. So I am going to knit a few rows, and then I'm going to tie my knot here. And then I'm going to wind up finishing out the 33 rows that I need of this mauve color. So when I'm changing my colors, I just knit a few rows. Down my work. And then once I've knitted a few rows down my work, I will go ahead. If you can see that there. You can see where this hole is right here from the color change right there. I don't want that hole to stay there. So I'm going to take these being careful to make sure that I maintain tension and I don't pull too tight because I don't want there to be a pucker. Just tie it loosely to make sure that it's the same tension as the stitches around it. Not too loose that it's not the same tension, but you got to kind of gauge it. I tie a double knot and then I actually do a triple knot. And then this triple knot is the one that I really pull on because those first two are keeping it right where I need it to be and then I trim my tail short and then that's my color change. I don't have to go back and um, go back through and retie my knots. That's how I do it. Okay, anyways, I'm going to knock out my 33 rows and <clears throat> I will meet you once I get past my 13th alternating stripe and we cast off and we do all of that and we will go from there. So I'm just going to finish working up this tube in um, on my 22 pin machine.
All right, so I've come to my last row here. I'm on row two, can't see it, 282 here. And I am not going to pass the black needle. I'm stopping right on the black needle because that's where I want the start and the end of my tubes to finish. And so I'm going to go ahead and clip a tail. Doesn't need to be exceptionally long. Um, and I'm going to make sure that that is in the middle here. I'm going to grab my waist yarn. And then do my last few rows in my waist yarn. And then we will take this off of the machine. Now, you will see that I'm not going to tie these two together because I don't want to keep this waist here and on here. So that hole is there. That's fine. Don't be anxious about that. All right, that is probably enough waist yarn. I'm going to clip my end rather short because I'm just going to crank this until it falls off of my machine. So there is my first 22 needle machine tube done. It is just stripe and stripe and stripe all the way down. That is what it is supposed to look like for a total of 282 rows. And then I'm going to get my 46 needle machine set up here and then I will show you how we do the 46 needle rows and then I will show you bind off and join and you should have everything you need to do your blanket. Okay, so just changed to my 46 pin Addy machine here and if you're using a Centro, um, I don't think there should be much issue with that. You just might want to increase your row count for the 33 and 12 um, as you go around. I would say not the 12. Actually, I take that back. Don't adjust your row count for the 12. Adjust your row count for the 33. I would say that probably 35 would be correct on a Centro, but I don't actually have a Centro, so I can't tell you 100% because I haven't tested it myself, but that would be my guess. So, um, and that would count for what you're doing on your 22 pin machine as well. You always want your row counts to be exactly the same. So if you're using a Centro, I would say 22 and 35. If you're using Addis, I would say, or excuse me, not 22, 12 and 35. And then if you're using Addis, you want your row count on your stripes to be 12 and 33. Okay. I'm going to go back to my black pins here. And I'm going to cast on with waist yarn just like I did. We're going to do our two stripes exactly the same in terms of row count. So your row counts are not going to be any different from what you did on your 22 and what you're doing on your 46. The only difference is going to be the colors of your yarn that you use. So the 12 row counts is going to be done in your mid color here. And your 33 row counts are going to be done on your lightest color here. So that is how these work out. Um, <clears throat> and I am going to work through that here on my machine. I'm not going to pause and start a bunch just for the sake of time. But just know that on your 46 machine, do your 12 row counts in your mid-tone and do your uh, 33 row counts in your lightest tone. That is what you're doing on this machine. On your dark machine, you're doing your darkest tone for 12 and your mid tone for your 33. So I'm going to go ahead and knock this out and I will catch up with you once I have my next tube finished. Okay, so I've gotten both of my tubes fully completed. This is the one that I made on the 22 needle machine and this is the one that I made on the 46. I'm going to show you how I close up the end of my tubes and then I will show you how I stitch these together and then once you have all those pieces you should be able to um, create your blanket so you should have everything that you need just my light here um, to create the tubes to finish your ends and to get these seamed together so the best way that I have found 
to close up my ends is to use a crochet hook. Um, I just grabbed a five and a half millimeter here. I apologize, the end is bitten off. My daughter did that. Can't have it anything nice, right? So um, <clears throat> I will show you here. Let's see what color contrasts better. This color contrasts better. I'll show you on this one. Um, so you can see exactly how I do this. So what you want to do with your tube, if you started and ended on the same needle, which you should have, um, your tails way up on this end and your tails way down at the other end of your tube will be on the same row. So that's how we want to uh, make sure that our rows are even. They're not going to be twisted for when we are seaming them together. So you want to take this and you want your tails, I'm right handed, so my tails are gonna to be to the left side because I'm starting on the right side and working left. Um, <clears throat> flip it around if you're left handed. I uh, grab my tails and pull them over here and then I wanna start in the exact opposite over here. So just what I do because I'm a perfectionist and I wanna make sure that I'm not missing anything, I just go down the length of my tube and I just kind of pinch each stitch all the way down, moving one farther just to make sure that I am exactly lined up. So these are the two stitches that I want right here. And you can, ultimately you can start with the top or the bottom. I always start with the bottom of those two stitches on the end. So I'm gonna poke my hook up through the bottom one there and then I'm going to poke my hook up through the top one and then pull the loop from the top stitch through the bottom stitch. Now find your next stitch here, which is this red loop right here on the bottom. Poke your hook up through that loop, that stitch, and pull it through the loop on your hook. Then go to the top, Look for the next loop over on the top side right here. Poke your hook up through that stitch and pull it through the loop. And you're going to keep doing that all the way till you get to the end. So next stitch, pull through, next stitch on the top, pull through, next stitch on the bottom. Ooh, grab two things of yarn there. Okay, next loop on the bottom, pull through, on the top, pull through, and this way of finishing not only gives a really clean looking closure, but you're always going to end without a twist because your starting stitch on your machine and your ending stitch on your machine were the same. So you should not have a twist in your tube at all. And this way of finishing off the end of your tube keeps a nice stretch in the end of your fabric so that you don't have tons of stretch in the middle and then your ends of your blanket have no stretch at all and over time it can start to stretch out and look funny. So you still have stretch in your ends. If you have stretch in one piece of your fabric, the best rule of thumb is to have stretch in all of your fabric. So I'm coming up to the end here. This is where it gets a little bit fiddly. I have, <clears throat> if you can see there, I have one, two stitches left on the bottom and one, two stitches left on the top. Just keep tugging on these tails. That'll kind of keep those stitches popped out so you can see them. Because once we do our next two stitches here, It'll get more difficult to see the last two. It always is. Loop through there. Now it might look like there's two here because my yarn is coming out of this bottom one. We just want this top one right here, okay? So poke through that last bottom stitch. Usually I do this with a smaller crochet hook because it's easier to get my hook through those stitches, but this is just the one that I grabbed. Um, and pull that through. So I have one more stitch. It might look like I'm all done, but there is still one more stitch hiding right up here. You should have your waist yarn coming out of that stitch. All right. 
You see how that, the way Siren's coming out of that last stitch there? You don't want to miss that one or you will unravel your tube. Nobody likes that. Unless you're doing it on purpose for a design, but yeah, still. All right, so I got my last stitch. I'm going to get that waist yarn out of the way. I'm gonna grab my tail here. My tail is not exceptionally long, it's just a normal length tail. I'm gonna yarn over on my hook, slip stitch, and I yarn over and slip stitch one more time. And pull that yarn all the way through that stitch. I'm gonna remove my waist yarn. I did a few extra rows on this waist yarn in this end. Oh well. Get all of that pulled straight out of there. And now this is loose. I got those two slip stitches right there. I'm just gonna pull in this and snug this down. So it creates a knot on your end. And that is not going anywhere. And see, we still have some stretch. So that is how you're gonna close the ends to all your tubes. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other end of this tube closed up. And I will also do the exact same closing technique on my big tubes here. Uh, the only difference is that you have more stitches that you have to close. So when you're going like this to keep your tails on one side, just track your stitches all the way down to make sure that you're starting with the correct two stitches down over here. Cause it's a little easier to lose track because this is just a bigger tube. But as long as you're careful and you count your stitches, you won't have any issues and you will have um, <clears throat> a tube that is not twisted. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish closing these up and then I will meet you back here and show you how to join. Okay, so I have my ends all closed up on all my tubes and here's where I'm at in my progress with the blanket so far. These are my last two panels that need to be attached. So I'm going to show you how to attach um, the panel using the slip stitch join method that I've been using on this blanket. This is the front side and this is the reverse side. So you can see that there is a seam line here, but that for me, because of the speed that I'm able to do this and the fact that this still has a ton of stretch in it for a join, a mattress stitch can be straight and not stretchy. Um, I'm not concerned about this at all. Um, <clears throat> so this is my preferred method of joining in general. I do do mattress stitch on some of my blankets, um, but for this one, I just decided to stick with a slip stitch join for it. So um, the first thing that you wanna do, because we do have a jog over, you can see where the jumps are. Um, we wanna make sure that those are all facing towards the back. And so when I slip stitch to join, I want the correct side of my work, the right side of my work, to be facing inward, sandwiched up against my work. So the outside or the back side of my work is what is facing out while I'm joining. Actually, I don't want those jogs right next to each other, so I'm gonna rotate this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now my jog is gonna be down on this side over here because the jog on the tube before is right up here and I don't want those to be right next to each other if I can avoid it. So um, I have these set out how I'm going to join them. I'm gonna grab my crochet hook and then you do need um, some yarn that you're using to join. I've been joining in the color that is consistent through all the stripes, which is the mauve color. So that is what I'm going to be using to stitch this together. Now starting on the end here, What you want to do is that you're going to be looking for rows to stitch into um, that go along the edge or very close to the edge. Sometimes I've had to work slightly over on either side um, <clears throat> just to make sure that I'm working into stitches that have the V's pointing the same direction. So these V's are pointing towards this way. These V's are pointing the same direction. So those are the rows that I'm gonna to wanna to stick with. That way you don't get wonky joins on the front. Um, so make sure that your V's, the bottom of your V's, are both pointing the same direction when you're going to join. And you're gonna be going into the in-between um, posts 
that are between those V's all the way down. I have a more in-depth tutorial on this lip stitch join. I will post that up in the cards and in the description so you can reference back to that if you don't want to have to um, <clears throat> jump through the chapters in this video. So I'm going to put my hook through right there. That is the first V on my row that I'm going to join into. And there's my first V over there. I'm going to hook through. And now I didn't do the post there because I'm just attaching my, my yarn. And I just pull it and do a double knot towards the top. Just like that. So to join, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hook through in the middle of that very first V. v I'm going to poke it through there and hook up and pick up that post. And then I'm going to look for the top V on the other side and do the exact same thing. Poke through the middle of the stitch and hook up to pick up that post. So I should have two things of yarn there. And then grab your working yarn yarn over and pull through both loops and you're going to be doing that exact same thing the whole way down so you want to go into the one poke your hook into the stitch that you just came out of so the same stitch that you were just in because that'll let you hook on your next stitch that next post and do the same thing on the other side poke it into the same V that you just worked out of and then hook that next post yarn over and then now you're going to be pulling through all three and just keep doing that all the way down the length of your rows being very careful to make sure that you are not twisting your rows in any way and that you are <clears throat> Getting a nice straight, oop, didn't hook the post, I hooked the side. Straight, even join all the way down the length of your piece. Now coming into these corners where we have four different colors coming together, you're going to just keep doing the exact same thing that you've been doing. Um, if you want to make sure that you have an absolute perfect join right here, where there's no jugs, there's no missteps, it all aligns perfectly. The best way that I can um, advise you to do that is to check as you go. So I'm going to go through this right here, this color change. And then I will open up where I'm working and I will check to make sure that my rows are all aligned and they should be because my row counts were accurate all the way down while I was making these tubes. I didn't miss any rows or do too many or do too few. So they should be good, but I just worked through that and so I just open it up and I take a look and that looks perfect to me. So I just keep going down. Now if for some reason this was off and incorrect, like say that this um, darker color came down a stitch or two farther down um, and so you had an uneven join <clears throat> an easy way to correct that is you look to the color that is too long and you pull your work back and then you say okay so say it was the mauve color that was too long I would just hook one post on this side and then depending on how many stitches off I was if I was only one stitch off I would hook the next two posts and yarn over and pull through all and you won't see that correction as you're doing your work at all. You will not see it. I've never been able to find a correction like that back after it's been done. If it was two rows that you were off, then you just want to make sure that you work back far enough that you can do a couple more regular stitches because I don't like them to be right next to each other. And then you would do the same thing. You would poke through one and then whatever side was too long, you would poke through and pick up 
two stitches, and that's how you would make that correction. So that is how to do your joining, and that is how to correct your row counts if needed. I'm going to pull those out because my row counts were correct. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish joining these up together, and I'm going to join this final tube to it as well. The joining is exactly the same for each tube, and then I once it's all done, I will... Um, <clears throat> film a short little ending to this and wrap it all up. So to finish up this video, I wanted to just give you a close up of the completed fringe that I did on the blanket here. It is now fully finished and I have that pretty fringe on two sides of the blanket. And to give you a nice close up of those joins and how they look all finished and seamed together here on the correct side of the blanket. And then on the back side, <clears throat> like I said, you do have those seams. I do have jumps. I didn't do a jumpless um, finish for this. If you want a video, there are videos on YouTube you can search for for a um, get rid of that jog in your work. But I didn't do that. I just kept it um, simple for the sake of time and just because I generally don't like to be bothered doing extra work if I don't have to. Um, so that is my completed blanket here. It turned out wonderful. It is big. It is thick, it is nice and squishy, and I will show you here <clears throat> the complete um, breakdown for the row counts. Um, I have the number of rows up top. Um, you can see it's one, one, two, two. That's just because it's for skinny rows and thick rows. Also here, I have the total number of stripes. There's 13 stripes in the blanket that I did according to the size. These are the row counts that you want to end on for each section so I didn't have to reset my counter all the time. And then over here is just exactly how many rows were in each of the stripes that I did here. This is the yarn that I used if you wanted to have that exact yarn. Um, I used Yarn Be Soft and Sleek and Blush Mauve and Burgundy like I said before and here is the finished size. Um, it did wind up being <clears throat> A little bit closer to square than I anticipated but it is it is still a rectangle you can see here it's 55 inches by 45 inches or 140 centimeters by 114 centimeters it is still a good size blanket plenty of room for me to snuggle up underneath um, not room for two but room for one and it is a beautiful blanket when it is all completed if you wanted to make it bigger obviously you can just add more sections down below or to the side. You can make this any size you want. It's a very adaptable pattern. This is just the size that I decided to go with and that is that. So thank you so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, you would like the blanket, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I am working on another blanket right now that I am super excited about and I cannot wait to show you. I cannot give you a sneak peek because it is actually a gift for someone and so I need to keep it locked down and top secret at the moment. But I think you guys are going to love this next one coming up too. I'm about halfway through it right now and I could not be more pleased with how it's turning out. I actually like it better than this one, believe it or not. We're just saying something because I was absolutely thrilled with how this turned out. So, all right. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye.